we're four days away, probably from the most important event in the recent history of that country. Edmundo is the opposition. He is leading the polls by 30 points, according to what we have access to. That means around 3 million votes. You and I know that President Maduro is in the business of power. And his intention is not to concede. But he is at a major disadvantage. So my question to you is, do you know what type of fraud they are planning to put together? What are they planning to do? Stuff the ballots, change the storymatics, el voto asistido, asking for a photo of your ballot. I mean, whatever. What info do you have? Do you recognize first and foremost that they're going to try to steal the election? Yes or no? Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, well, we've already seen important steps that the Maduro side has taken disqualifying two earlier opposition candidates, uh, harassing uh, opposition campaign workers, arresting them, vandalizing vehicles, punishing people that provide support. So we've already seen. So let's put that, that aside. I understand, I agree with you that they tried, but now they are, now we're in the show. So how are they going to try to steal the show? What info do you have? Well, I think the, the key uh, barometer early on will be turnout uh, for the vote. Uh, and uh, as you note, uh, polls indicate a, a significant lead for the opposition. Uh, and uh, we expect that um, if they're able to turn out their voters, um, they should perform well. But what info do you have? What are the schemes they are trying to put together? Do you have that info? Because something they're planning. What is it that they're planning? I cannot figure it out because there are many different ways, but I want to ask the State Department. What are you guys expecting? The, uh, I don't have any specific information on what they might, what the Maduro side might do. What I will say is that this election represents an, a major opportunity for Venezuela to return to the community of nations and to have an opportunity for a better future. But uh, you know that that's not Maduro's plan. I mean, they're in the business of power. What do you mean conceding victory or giving power away? No, 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 that's not part of the agenda. So since we know that is not part of the agenda, so what can we do in order to, can we talk to Lula? Can we talk and we put more pressure? I mean, we are the United States and you guys are in charge. What can we do to send the message to Maduro after, let's say, polls are gonna close at seven o'clock at night? I mean, I've covered this before as a journalist. So let's say by two o'clock in the morning, they're still counting. We know. So what are we gonna do in those key hours? Me, we meaning the United States, you, the State Department. You're going to pick up the phone, and what are you guys going to do? We continue to engage with partners from around the world uh, to maintain a united Who are front. those partners? Tell me. Who are, you, who are you calling as an ally to call Maduro and say, you got to go, guy? Well, I think we're like-minded with uh, countries uh, throughout the hemisphere, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Argentina, Chile. Have you enlisted Chile. them already? Have you been talking to them and saying, so, hey, I need you to... Be on standby. Uh, during the OAS General Assembly in Asuncion, Paraguay, we had the opportunity to talk to uh, more than a dozen partners from around the hemisphere uh, about key issues, including uh, our collective support for democracy in Venezuela. Uh, Secretary Blinken engaged the a dozen colleagues during the ministerial meeting of America's Partnership for Economic Prosperity. Mr. Uh, Nichols, you, I understand everything you've told me, and I'm on your side. I just want to hear something more forceful, that well, we, the United States, in this, in this magnificent moment of biblical proportions for the history of the Venezuelans, that we are going to be a little bit more forceful. But I hear what you're telling me. Is there anything else that you want to share with us? I have another question. I know that Maduro, when he realized that he's three million votes down, he calls 
the Biden administration through Jorge Rodriguez, who is one of the top lieutenants next to Maduro. Can you share with us what was discussed? That happened, uh, what, earlier this month? They picked up the phone, they called Biden administration. What did they say? So um, we did have a uh, conversation with uh, some of the Maduro side representatives. They expressed uh, their unhappiness about um, about what? Uh, that they're going to lose? About the fact that we have not lifted sanctions. Okay, uh, yeah, right. And we expressed our disappointment at the disqualification uh, of earlier candidates and our hope that uh, this would be a competitive election. Uh, and, uh, and what did they say to that? Of course, well, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to get into all of the back and forth that we had in a negotiation, but I will say... Was that something negotiated? We've, we've no. We value the channel of communication that we have, and it's important as we go forward to be able to have conversations between our two governments, uh, between our government and the Maduro But side. you cannot share with us anything that was spoken specifically or negotiated in that. I'm not going to get into the All right. What about in ideas. Qatar last year? There was a, also a discussion between Biden administration officials and the Maduro regime was a transition discussed? The, as part of the, the pending phase of the Barbados agreement talked about uh, the next phase would be some type of a um, civic pact and talk, a discussion of what would happen from the time of the election until uh, the January uh, inauguration of whomever the victor is in the election. That, all of those discussions are, are still pending. Moving forward, the morning after, Maduro comes out and says, I won by 50.315. What are we going to do if we know that they stole the elections just like they have done before? What's going to be our first reaction? Well, uh, under Venezuelan electoral law, uh, the their electoral council has until the following day to announce the results, and then August 2nd, uh, they're supposed to publish detailed results. So there'll be international observers on the ground. There'll be thousands of domestic uh, poll watchers from the opposition, as well as from parties that support the Maduro side. We want to look, and there'll be international diplomats present. We want to look at all the information. We're not going to rush for t to judgment, and, and then we will make a decision. All right, and then we'll be in touch, because as you said, we both agree on the fact that the Venezuelans deserve to be free and choose their own leaders.